June 17th, 2002 was the day that my family and I purchased our new dog, Smokey, that I had knew would become a part of my family. He was a dog that loved people, listened well, and even though he was big and scary, he was actually one of the biggest dogs, biggest babies you guys could ever meet. He was a dog that would carry around blankets as if he was a baby wanting to be cuddled or something. He was a dog that would only eat when the family sat down to eat. We cherished him as one of our own. But soon we began to watch him suffer and slowly fade away. November 27th of 2015 was the day the blanket stayed in one spot, his playful paws were put to rest, and our golden heart was no longer beating. I personally have never seen my dad cry before, except for the moment when the doctor gave Smokey his last shot and his head slowly fell into my dad's arm. There was a lot of tears shed from my dog that day, but quite frankly, that was not the case for some people in China. The only thing that comes out of the selling of dog meat is the process of getting the dogs, the process of slaughtering the dogs, nothing but angry people who disagree with their actions. Because killing in America is a natural thing to do for food, but how China goes about it harms the moral fabric of these loving creatures. People in China aren't the ones necessarily do things the right way. There are some people there who arrange animals in nothing but love and compassion, and others in nothing but a life of cruelty and abuse. Dogs in China mysteriously go missing and aren't documented. So a story reported by Stuart Leavenworth reported a story about Song King who purchased a dog he, that he named Happy. It was big, white, and fluffy and brought nothing but joy and pure happiness to him. But six months later after being purchased, it was taken. As recorded by a closed TV circuit, the dog was lounging outside when Song had a bunch of family over. They went inside to finish up some last minute cleaning in the kitchen and a white van drove by and threw out some food for the dog. And as any, as any normal dog would, the dog approached it and then the dog was taken. Song was sad. He knew that his dog was doomed, but he could not cry because he knew that his loved ones were more sad than he was. But deep down in his heart, he knew that his dog, Happy, was doomed for one of China's dog-eating restaurants. In China, they love golden retrievers in labs. But the city of China, a lot of cities in China banned them to help the process to cut down the process of selling of dog meat. But that did not stop the men and women in China from doing what they do. They love golden retrievers in labs because the meat varies from other people's. And then the cutting down... So now that the cutting down of Tibetan, now that the cutting down of the labs and golden retrievers, they went to Tibetan Massive, which now are a go-to luxury for China's elite. The Tibetan Massive are very wanted for their size and ferocity, which makes the beating with them not hurt so much. The Tibetan Massives are sold for a lot of money in China. Um, Yang Chan sold his one Massive for sixty-two thousand three hundred and thirty-three dollars. A competing rival sold his for one million one hundred seventy-eight thousand and three hundred and seventy-seven dollars, <coughs> making it the most making it the most expensive dog ever sold in China. Making it, Mastiffs are prized in China for their size and ferocity. Yang said, you can hit a Mastiff with a big stick and it won't back down, but a beating with a stick in, for dogs in China is something that they know all too well. Killing animals in China is the, what they do. Killing animals in China is not the horrendous thing that they do, but again, but it's a daily basis of abuse that they are put through. They are slaughtered in a manner that is nightmarish in its own brutality. Some dogs are hung by their back legs and skinned alive or gouged out their eyes while they are alive. And after that process, they are thrown into more dogs that are the same, in the same condition as they are, only to be laying in their deathbeds. Some dogs are hung by their back legs for days as the Chinese men come back just to see the dog all bled out and then they continue the process of slaughtering. The slaughtering of dogs in China, people call it as the tenderizing. So every hit to the head, every beat to the stomach that they get, that's the tenderizing of the meat. Instead of using a normal kitchen tool as the animal is dead. In China, they have a Yulin festival that kills over 10,000 dogs alone. The Yulin festival used to be known as a sacrifice for dogs, but now it is just known for nothing. Now it's just known for the cruelty and potential of spreading diseases. Yang Yuha, came to, Yang Yuha was a Chinese activist who came to the Yulin festival only to spread the word that dogs are our friends and that we should not kill dogs in a manner that we that we raise and we love as our own pets. So this the activist doesn't necessarily disagree with what um, the Chinese people are doing, but yet again, how they go about it. They say they eat meat because the eating of dog meat stimulates internal heat, so it makes it a food that wards off a cold winter, and it brings good luck, wealth, and health. The Associated Press from the CBS News said that 10 to 20 million dogs are killed each year in China. And some, when they are transferred, they transferred 1,250 miles from Beijing all the way to the Guangxi province. And again, a lot of them are without food and water. So the constant torture is something that Chinese activists cannot stand any longer.
Ben Gurio from the Washington Post stated that UN Festival caused a huge uproar. After the Land Festival this year of 26, the last year of 2016, the festival, the animal rights of this, delivered a petition bearing 11 million, bearing 11 million signatures only to hope to shut down the festival. On June 21st of 2016, a scattered protest took place all over the U.S., including the Consul in Los Angeles. I underscore B88 posted a picture of nothing but angry protesters and captioned it, this is just the beginning, and hashtag I stand with my pack, hashtag stop the lane festival, and hashtag say no to dog B. This just goes to show that the problem is not in the history, it's not in the past, it's goes to that more people are becoming more and more aware of the situation and only hope to shut it down. A lot of dogs are stolen so they aren't documented, but, the, but with the help of the light that is being shined on this problem has only helped the advocates get rid of the Ulang Festival. In today's society, animal meat is a natural thing for food, but China ruins the morality of these creatures that we call our friends. If this was your dog online and that day could go by without worrying about it, wouldn't that be awful? In China, it brings, in China they do the horrible process of getting the dogs by taking dogs that people love and care for, but it does not compare to life and brutality that the animals are put through on a daily basis. With both of these in comes the Chinese activists who only hope to stop the Yuling Festival, but in the long run, get it banished. Smokey was a part of my childhood. He was the best dog that my family and I could ask for. He was a dog that I loved and I miss very much, but I know he will never be forgotten. But I'm glad, I know every animal's life has to come to an end, but I'm glad my dog got to die peaceful and knew that he was loved, unlike the dogs in China.